Hi, welcome to the first ever online 2017 Tiny House Summit. I'm Sarah Isabella, and today we have a community day presentation with Teresa Baker, who's going to be talking to us about the do it yourself tiny house advocacy. Take it away, Teresa. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I'm excited to be here in my living room <laughs> talking to my computer, but I'm excited that everybody is tuning in here today. Um, if you're listening, you fall into one of the next uh, following categories. So, A, you're really interested in tiny house houses and the tiny house movement, and you're listening to as many presentations as you can. Awesome. Or B, you're really interested in the tiny house movement, but maybe you're held back by a few obstacles of legally living, so you're interested in advocacy. Awesome. Or C, you just really like the word advocacy. Or maybe D, you're just really confused right now. That's okay. My dog is sitting in the living room, also confused at why I'm talking to my computer, so you're not alone. Um, let me start off by reintroducing myself again. I'm Teresa Baker. Most um, tiny house enthusiasts know me as Tessa. I'm living in Los Angeles. This is where I leave. A few so I'm the leader of Uzias Facebook and I also organize an advocacy group called the Tiny Advocacy Network here in Los Angeles. And I'm um, also the co-founder of my business, Latch Collective, which is the LA Tiny Co-Build Haven. And I'm also a state chapter leader with the American Tiny House Association. So those are a lot of hats. Um, don't take notes on that. I'll touch on those a little bit later. Um, today, our, my presentation is going to focus on the work we've been doing here in Los Angeles to increase the options for legally living tiny. And I think that a lot of what we have learned here in Los Angeles can really be applied anywhere. But there are also nuances to each community that are going to make aspects of advocacy and organizing and, and, and um, interacting with government a lot different for a large city like LA um, than to a smaller community that you might find yourself in. So um, I respect those differences, but nonetheless, my goal is that by the end of this presentation, you'll feel inspired to take action, however big or small, and increase the options for legally living tiny in your community. So this is my first time with Google Hangouts, and I'm going to practice this right here. There we go. Uh, um, apologies on the, on the going back and forth here, but this should work out just fine. So you might be asking yourself right now, can I really do anything? Well, some of you might be thinking, yeah, I'm inspired, and I'm well-connected, and I'm awesome, and I'm ready to make change. And the rest of us might be feeling more like Charlie Brown on the left here, feeling overwhelmed at some of the barriers that exist to leaving tiny. Hopefully, my presentation will help you feel a little bit more like the super kid, but if you're feeling like Charlie Brown, I want to assure you that if you are interested in tiny houses, if you're willing to do a few hours of research, if you're willing to connect to others, then yes, you can really do anything. But let me ask you, what is it that you want to achieve? I, oh, there we go. When I moved to Los Angeles in 2015, um, no way was I an advocacy buff. I had studied regional and urban planning in school, and I was pr pretty familiar with the tiny house movement and all of the challenges that existed to living tiny. But when I moved to Los Angeles was really to connect with other tiny house enthusiasts out there. Um, and my wife and I also wanted a space to be able to build our home. We lived in an apartment and a space to live in our home once it was built. And preferably, we wanted to build our home with the support of others because we had li have limited personal building experience. So those were our goals when we moved to Los Angeles. Um, what are maybe you can take a few minutes now and just think about what you really want to achieve right now and set a few general goals 
For example, do you want to have a, connect to a strong network of other tiny house enthusiasts? Are you wanting to live in your house um, as a backyard home to someone else's home, maybe a relative's, or do you want to build a tiny house for someone else in your backyard? Um, there's, there's some examples of goals here that I've listed. And perhaps yours isn't on there, that's great, but, but having a general goal will help guide you in what you're, what you're really working for. So it is really helpful and almost impossible without other people. Um, and you want to know who else is out there. So what I did um, might look different than you, but look, look out for local tiny house meetup groups, for Facebook pages. Perhaps there's professional builders or other tiny house related businesses in your community. You can email the American Tiny House Association and get connected with your state chapter leader or ask them if there are other local um, leaders in your area that they can connect you to. Other affordable housing organizations or advocates that aren't focused on tiny houses but really have the same mission as you so you guys can talk about your shared goals. Um, and of course, there's always events that you can go to, tiny house related or just minimalism events that you're going to be able to connect to other people at. Um, when, I, when I first started looking for other people to connect with here in LA, I searched on Meetup and I searched on Facebook and I really couldn't find anything that was local to Los Angeles, which was shocking to me. It's a big city, but there was really nothing for Los Angeles in specific. Um, there was a group in Oaks, a bit more north than me, but to, to really um, achieve my goals, I thought, I want to connect with people locally. So I started up the meetup group for LA Tiny House Enthusiasts. And then I looked on Facebook, and it was the same thing. There was only a general group for Southern California tiny house, and, um, tiny house people, but nothing really local to Los Angeles. So um, I connected, actually, with the organizer of that existing group and asked her if she knew of any Facebook groups that were based in Los Angeles, and she actually did. There was a private group that um, she told me about. So I connected with that private group, and they had different – um, goals and a different vision for just my vision was connecting people and sharing resources and and their vision was a little a different more of a side project so with their permission it was okay to start up another group now I, I want to suggest that if there is already an existing group you might not want to reinvent the wheel and because it's great to build upon community that is already there there's going to be great resources in that group already so it's great to connect to um, groups if they already exist and um, okay so yes I also went to a, a um, an event and it wasn't actually based on tiny houses it was a micro housing event a more more so on micro apartments and at that event I heard um, during the question and answer period, someone talked about tiny houses and shipping containers, and this person was a part of an organization that was building tiny houses for veterans. And so at least I knew that there was other groups out there, and I was able to connect with them after. This is the initial initial stages, right? Just seeing what already exists and, and what is out there. Okay, so once you know what's out there, you also want to find out who, or sorry, who is out there. You want to find out what is out there. So you'll need, you'll probably need to do a little bit of research here. So achieving your general goal could be simple, or it could require some work. But you're not going to know that until you find out what the barriers are. So research your county's municip or municipalities planning and development. Um, our website um, call the department the planning department to ask specific questions just 
do an internet search, all these things can help you find out these answers. It might seem overwhelming, but a simple call might help you if you have a specific question. So I've listed here some of the things that are usually barriers to living tiny. For example, there's um, usually a minimum square footage requirement or floor area requirement to homes um, that are single family homes. Um, and there's possibly um, a minimum lot size requirement. For example, 5,000 square feet. You're not allowed to go smaller. So sometimes that dissuades people from building a tiny house um, financially. Tiny house on a large lot might not seem the best way to gain affordable housing if, you're, if that is your goal. So where RVs are allowed to park? Are you allowed to have one on your property? Um, are there any available RV parks? Are there any RV parks for sale? Any mobile home parks available for conversion or for sale? Um, you can look into what section of, what building code, sorry, your, your municipality follows. Um, uh, many of you might know that there's um, a new version of the International Residential Code, the 2018 version that has an, is a tiny house appendix for allowing tiny houses on foundation to be built with allowances for smaller spaces and such as or stair stairways and smaller loft heights and so this helps when building small homes so maybe you'll want to know um, if if your county is updating their their building code soon and 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 that's something that you could um, achieve is to ask them to follow the IRC 2018 appendix V um, look into the acceptable foundation systems if you're thinking about um, building your tiny house and then placing it on skids or is an, um, another alternative foundation system acceptable. So these are all things you're going to need to do the time and look into. So what I learned from doing research for Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles and the county was that there was an 800 square foot minimum for single family dwellings that was set by the county applied to the city of LA as well because you know this county and the city is within the county however it was only by talking directly to a planner that I realized that the minimum square footage set by the county didn't need to apply to all the municipalities within that county only to really unincorporated lands or to cities that um, chose to follow the, the county's minimum. So the, the city of LA actually does not have a minimum square footage requirement for single family dwellings, which is awesome. You can build as small as you want, as long you know as it follows code and you get a building permit and everything. So that was something that required not only my own investigation, but confirmation with um, an official. I also discovered in my research something called small lot subdivision, which I thought would be a great opportunity to live in tiny houses on foundations because it allowed you to take a big lot, say a 5,000 square foot, into smaller lots and bypass certain requirements such as um, setbacks, so you, how far you're um, placed back from the street and other houses. So essentially, it was allowing you to build small homes easily. And, um, this was something that was an opportunity, I felt, for building, say, um, a little subdivision of tiny houses. Um, that's, that, was the, that was the introduction to that idea, and it ended up being a little bit complicated, but at least um, I was inspired and had this um, knowledge of opportunities, right? So once you do your research and you find out all this information, You'll probably be all jazzed up to share your findings, right? You want to be getting together with people and and sharing your information. So, I would encourage um, to hold an event, right? Um, perhaps you have your own platform, you started your own Facebook group, or someone else has a Facebook group. Ask them if you can host a tiny house event and just talk about the legal aspects of living tiny and it doesn't have to be formal I would actually encourage it to be the opposite just get to know people in your community and and sneak in on your findings and see what other people are having issues with and see what other people's goals are and 
see what they've learned. So share share that initial conversation. Um, this is a picture of one of the first meetups that I held. Um, it was actually the third one. We had a tour of a tiny house, and then we had a picnic together, and um, it was going awesome. We were talking about houses, and then I really started to realize at this meetup that people were really not, they were really held back by the lack of legally in their home. They weren't wanting to pursue their tiny house dreams unless they had a legal avenue to do so. And I also realized here that people were looking for and needing a place to actually build their home because like others, oh sorry, like myself, these people were, they were, let me just go back to my face here. <laughs> So they were living in an apartment or didn't have a big enough yard or, or, you know, not having a safe space to build. So it inspired me. I came home from that meetup and I was super jazzed because my wife and I had actually been playing with this idea since I was in school about um, this dream, basically, of opening up a building, build their homes and share the tools and share their knowledge and expertise and connect to professionals for for advice and it really there was a need for that I thought it seemed in LA so I was like we should con consider pursuing this um, we had played with business plans and everything in the past but it was really a dream and and only by connecting to others and seeing the real need out there did I realize that possibly our dreams could come true and we could start this business up now I'm really going to be honest with you there are going to be naysayers that come to these events possibly I mean this is what happened at this event that I showed a photo of. Everything was going great. We were having a great time. And um, then someone came a little bit late, and they missed the tiny house tour. And um, they came in, and I was talking about how we could potentially look into small at subdivision and um, other things that I had found. And he basically said, City of LA would never consider tiny houses. I've tried. I build tiny houses. and." And I um, fly in in LA, and if I was a property owner, which I am, I wouldn't want a tiny house next to me. And and so we had a lot of negative things to say. And literally, someone at the meetup said, "Wow, this meetup sucks." So we went from being super happy to um, feeling depressed because this did like he had all this experience, and he was really negative. And I decided to not let that really decide um, our path forward. I mean, people think that they that it isn't possible. You don't know if they truly know that. And so I was just asking more questions and trying not to argue, but we definitely had different opinions. But I realized that someone, he was interested in tiny houses, but he had a negative opinion of living. And so, and a person like that could actually help me understand where the naysayers are coming from and can be a really valuable resource to me because I can ask them questions and then be prepared for responses when I get them later on. So we stayed in at the next meetup. Um, he actually said, oh, here's my enemy, ha, ha, ha. And I made sure that we weren't enemies, we were friends. And so just keep the people that are negative close to you and and try to build good connections with them because you don't want them um, feeling um, isolated. They might stir up some controversy or, you know, I don't know what would happen, but everyone in the community, regardless of their opinion of legally living tiny, is an asset. And so just be prepared that that might happen and it's not the end of the world at all if it does. <laughs> so. Let me go to my next slide here. So we've gotten people, oh, yep, yeah, there we go. We've gotten people together. We've had a few meetups. Um, time to really have an event that is focused on the legal aspects of living tiny. I myself dived into the research about how to legally live tiny in LA, and I had like 30 pages of notes, and I thought, you know, this is a lot of valuable information, so I want to share this. So you'll see on the left, I held a very, um, ju I don't know, um, novice workshop series, and um, 
the few workshops that were basically broke down my findings on legally living tiny in LA and they were a huge success some um, people came out um, we had our, our full room each time that we did them and um, and that was awesome. And then you'll see on the right, there's a picture of Alexis and Christian from Tiny House Expedition. Um, we also had an event, because they were visiting in LA, they agreed to partner and do a tour of their tiny house and then do a screening of their documentary, which is uh, Living Tiny Legally. And so this, this was an awesome event and a way to get people inspired about making change and, and, and being aware of the challenges that exist. So I think that both of these events were really helpful in, in um, getting people together. And at, at, point, um, at this point, let me just see. Um, my next slide is Grow an Advocacy Network. So kind of in the middle of the, the workshop series that I held, did I really realized that um, I was going to need to start this advocacy network, and it was not my idea at all. Um, I before showed that I partnered with someone to hold this workshop series, and they basically heard about my workshop series and wanted to help me get a space for that event um, for an affordable rate. And so they partnered with me. You may, they used their nonprofit status to book um, a community room, and this person was a great resource for um, information about local advocacy. And so it was a great partner. They were the one who I actually um, heard of at that doing tiny houses for veterans. And so um, after one of my workshops, we met up, my, myself and um, this person called Eli. Eli had suggested to me, you know, you have um, a group and you guys should have a mission statement and Maybe I'll just backtrack here, just to my previous slide. So let's talk about what happens when you've had your few initial meetups and you've started to form a community. You've done some research into legally living um, tiny or the barriers that exist or just dived into your goals more and you wanna share your knowledge. Um, this is a great time after you formed an initial community to have an event focus on your goals and focus on the legal aspects of living tiny. So this is what I did. Um, I held a workshop series that, let me show you the screen here. I um, held a very novice workshop series that was focused on legally living tiny in LA. I had done research and it was about 18 pages long, maybe more about, about all of those different aspects of living tiny um, in Los Angeles. So uh, this workshop was a really big hit. Um, people came out, um, filled the room, and um, asked to realize um, how what was already legal and share ideas and and really form together and learn together and on the right you'll see um, Alexis and Christian from tiny house expedition they were visiting in Los Angeles I met them at an event and they agreed to partner and hold a event where they toured their tiny house and screened Entry. This was at a community member's house. She offered her house to both have the tour and the screening of their documentary. Hey, if you haven't seen that movie, you could have an event. It gets people really excited about the possibilities for making change in their local community. Um, so about in the middle of these events was when Eli approached me about forming a tiny advocacy network. Now, Eli helped me put on the workshop series. I heard about the workshop series that I was trying to put on, and he offered me um, a space that was going to be affordable so that we could do it for um, low cost, and so that was awesome. And, and he, Eli, is um, 
think earlier, I, I heard him ask a question at an event about tiny houses, and he was a part of an organization that was building tiny houses for veterans. So we met up, and he was saying, you know, you should really form a group, an advocacy group, a group focused on achieving your goals. And I, I was kind of reluctant. I did not feel like I was the right person for the job. I didn't have a lot of experience in advocacy. Um, I knew it had to be done, but I thought there was definitely going to be someone more professional or more experienced out there. So I was hesitant, and I basically said, okay, I mean, I'll start the group because we do need to achieve things, but I don't know about being, you know, a major part of advocacy. Um, but <laughs> it ended up being not so bad. So let me just share my next screen with you. So growing an advocacy network. Eli suggested that we develop a mission statement, which was super helpful in guiding um, where we we're going and helping everyone know what I meant by let's start an advocacy network. So I'll read you our mission statement. Um, uniting in our shared interest of affordable by design, sustainable and minimalist housing, we use our shared knowledge and skills to advocate for increased housing options, allowing the needs of the tiny house community to be heard and met. We aim to improve the wider Los Angeles community's understanding of tiny homes and their place as a legitimate housing solution. So maybe it's a little long, I'm not the best at writing mission statements, but you know, it, it worked for the time being and it's still in place now and if we want to edit it, we can. If you're great at writing mission statements, help help your local community group to write theirs, including mine. Um, so, okay, this the next bullet point, I'm sorry, is a little bit incorrect, but develop a list of those who also want to achieve Similar things as your mission statement, right? Not necessarily your mission statement, but there's other housing groups um, or even just tiny house enthusiasts. You can start to create a list of all your contacts. So I create mine on an Excel spreadsheet and it helps me track everyone's name, where their uh, neighborhood is, and their email so that we can stay in touch. Um, you'll definitely need a method of communication if you're forming this advocacy group. Um, yeah, Facebook is your main method of communication. All right, that's fine. But maybe you do want to have um, email updates that keep people informed about any changes that go on or events that you're having or meetings. And I really encourage to have regular meetings. We have a meeting once a month that is focused on tiny advocacy. Now. And it helps us stay up um, and helps them share work. Um, and and really stressing and um, again then you can reach out to possible parts as well and even if they're not interested in specific um, events or um, they will and have information say on affordable housing which is a part of your cause um, potentially so reach out to it might be um, your cause is more sustainability or minimalism there's going to be other groups out there that could be a part of growing your network and helping your achieve your goals um, and so you'll see that I you know I start basic I don't have the best graphic skills but graphics help and and in your communication on Facebook if you have cool graphics that's great I attempted to make a cool graphic but it wasn't the best so go on to Fiverr <laughs> pay someone five dollars and and in a day they'll make you something that looks a little bit better like I showed below just a little hint so as a group, once you have, say, your first meeting, um, you can talk about your your mission statement, but also, you know, think about specific goals. You you thought about general goals, your own personal goals before, but now you have this group, and and you know a little bit more. So maybe redefine your goals, um, and 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 really get the terminology right. Right? Are you going to create new a new zoning ordinance allowing tiny house subdivisions? Um, are you going to rezone a parcel for RV living? Try to do. Um, it might be multiple things. It might just be one thing that you guys all want to do together. That is great. But getting together and um, deciding what those goals are are great. 
Okay, let's go next. So then you're going to have some goals and you'll definitely want to look into what the political will is for achieving those goals. Is the timing right? So look into the issues that um, your municipalities, um, it, the issues that are on their radar right now is sustainability their key focus this year. Does the mayor have a sustainability task force and they're all into green initiatives? Then, then use that to your advantage. Or is there a huge housing crisis, a uh, homelessness issue where there's people who cannot afford housing and, and tiny houses could be an option to get people into affordable housing preventatively for homelessness or helping people that are homeless into temporary shelters, um, bridge housing like in San Jose. So increasing density is there a lack of space they don't want to encroach on farmland and they're looking for infill development and can you push tiny houses as backyard housing um, so what is your what is on your city's radar and and try to speak in a language that they care about look into their plan and their municipal plan and see um, what language they use and what their city's goals are and then you'll be wanting to look at to what ordinances are being revised right now. Is there anything open for review? Are, are they updating anything? So that's what we did. Um, the, the additional dwelling unit ordinance was being redone when I first um, started up this advocacy network, as well as a small subdivision ordinance. Both of these things were being um, revised. And so that was an opportunity to really organize and figure out how we could act upon um, those two areas and um, also look at the news and what issues are really getting a lot of coverage in the news and if you can generate um, public support for your ideas that are realized um, there's a re that will also help the news what ordinances are being revised and municipalities radar those are some things that will help you determine the political will for changes and my presentation again so I really want you guys not to be shy this was a big learning experience of mine basically I told you that I realized that the additional dwelling unit the backyard housing ordinance was being revised now I didn't re know um, how to best approach the people that were revising that and instead of just calling up the city or getting in contact I decided to you know wait till we got more of our things together and um, really could approach them with um, I don't know what I was waiting for, but I did not feel comfortable approaching the city with um, my questions because I didn't know the right way to ask. Also, it's the city of LA. It's really big. Um, but let me tell you what happened. So I waited quite a while. The, the additional dwelling unit, which means backyard home, got revised and passed. Um, all this while, um, we didn't get involved. We were a little bit late to the party on that. Um, we commented a few times, but we didn't do anything substantial. And then we were, we were still fig figuring ourselves out as um, a network. And then um, California passed um, reg a law that basically said that this all cities in California cannot discriminate against additional dwelling units as housing. So they can't. Um, overly require parking or they can't charge crazy fees basically all the things that municipalities might have been doing to make it hard to build backyard homes um, the state was saying you can't do that and so the city of Los Angeles had just updated their um, ordinance and now the state said that they needed to change it again so now right now current time we're in a process that our uh, time period that they're we their ordinance once more and they really want to make it in line with the state's requirements so they don't have to do this again so all right I'm having a meeting for my business latch collective at a at a bar <laughs> and we were a big group so we made a big a uh, little bit of a scene and this is an important story just just keep with me here we're having a meeting and someone is 
he's kind of lurking in the background. He's listening in. Um, I didn't really realize I was busy leading this meeting, but other people realized that this guy was being a little bit weird. And after about 10 minutes, he just came over and up to me and said, I'm sorry to interrupt your group. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Matthew Glesney. I'm the lead planner um, for the additional dwelling units in Los Angeles. And I work for the city and I really like tiny homes and I love what you're doing right near, um, here. And um, I'd love to, to keep in contact and um, talk. And I was shocked. So was everyone, they, everyone, I think we all gave a round of applause for coming up to us and we gave each other our information and then not, he contacted me before I even got a chance to email him. I think the next day he emailed me and said, think so this was the exact person that I was shy to talk to. Thank goodness we found each other in a public place and he over heard and was not shy to come and talk to me of tiny homes and he had actually drafted back in September months months before um, to include tiny houses but then decided oh he doesn't want to rock the boat what this will get this is just an idea so he didn't end up going forward with that and just presented one um, now, if we would have um, organized and gotten in touch with him sooner, perhaps we could have had a lot more time to make tiny houses a part of additional dwelling unit ordinance. And that's what we're doing right now. We're meeting with the city. We actually met last week and had an awesome presentation um, in a second. But, you know, it's, it's a little bit rushed, and it, does, it doesn't have the best timing because we were shy at the beginning. And we, we didn't trust that we could really make change just by saying hi and realizing that the person we're talking to might love what we're doing and not, not be negative, Nancy. Let me go back to my presentation here. So ask for advice. If you have a goal, you can definitely ask others. So again, you, you should definitely reach out to your American Tiny House Associate chapter leader. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so you can email their um, state code at americantinyhouseassociation.org. Ask them if they know anything about your, um, your specific goal in the area or if they can help you find out more information or help you get people. Then reach out to big names in the tiny house world. If you're if you're at a point where you're really organized and 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 um, you have an idea and you're really going forward and talking to your municipality, then in, in, invite other people to be involved. For instance, I just last week or a few weeks ago, I had this email chain with. Um, um, I was emailing Macy Miller and Alexis and Dan Fitzpatrick and Andrew um, and Vina, all these big names in the tiny house world. Um, they were awesome at helping me um, really draft the ordinance to include tiny houses in a way that made sense. And maybe people disagreed or they had a different opinion that would work great for Los Angeles, but if I didn't ask for their advice, um, it wouldn't be as strong as it was right now. And I actually was able to show the planners the comments by all these different tiny house experts. And that was really helpful for them to, to get why we were including certain things. And because we've, in the tiny house world, we've thought about this more than say the planners might have thought about including tiny houses in certain things. So so it is really helpful. I'm not promising people will respond, but but they might, and they might be awesome. People in the tiny house world are amazing. So thank you to everyone who's helped me. And also want to back to my presentation here. I want to reach out, oh, sorry, reach out to partner organizations. Definitely other LA who care about affordable housing. 
advertising and um, units and asking for their advice on what you're trying to achieve and asking them to support you. Another story here. Um, I'm connected with a lovely woman in multiple location to the right people. Lois is a, a longtime advocate for um, sustainable and sustainable housing. And um, in the Tiny Advocacy Network, we had put out a call that we were um, we're doing this advocacy um, for tiny houses as additional dwelling units. And she included this as a point on her meeting with the mayor. Yeah, she worked, she met personally with the mayor the day after my email. And because she's been in um, long, she can meet with the mayor and talk about sustainability issues and give opinion on them. And so she included um, that she supported um, our efforts and our desire to include tiny houses as additional dwelling units. So I didn't even ask her to do that, but because we were already partners and connected and she was a part of my mailing list, she just knew that this is something that she could do to help them. And let me go back to my presentation. So you'll also, hopefully if you have a with the municipality set up. You'll want to find someone with credentials. You're awesome as an individual, and maybe if it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting, I had that with a planner who was interested in meeting with me, that's great. But then we had a big presentation. Now let me tell you about that presentation. Last week, um, I found Dan Fitzpatrick, who was um, tiny houses passed in Fresno, California as additional dwelling units. So he, Dan, is the man for this topic. Dan drove down to Los Angeles the morning of our presentation with about 15 people. Some were from the mayor's office, some were other elected officials from different districts of the city. There was planners there, there was building and safety there. It was a pretty big meeting and they were a task force that were actually focused on alternative and affordable housing options. And well, we gave this presentation on movable tiny houses as additional dwelling units. Now, I say we. All I did was introduce um, myself and, and Dan and um, introduce um, our interest in tiny houses for Los Angeles and touch a little bit on my personal interest for living tiny and then really um, segue into what the tiny house movement was, I gave it to Dan because Dan has given this presentation before. Dan is also a state chapter leader for the American Tiny House Association. But, you know, maybe if it look, maybe if you don't have Dan from you, you're not going to ask Dan to fly across the country. I wouldn't be surprised if you, if he consider it, but he's so friendly and nice, but you know, he has limited time. So you're going to have to find someone else that may not have the exact credentials, but if you have multiple people in a room that can talk about what you're trying to achieve from a really strong and experienced um, perspective, it works. Dan has experience high, at high end, um, high up um, experience in municipal government, and he also has experience as a developer. So he not only gave things for Fresno, but had um, an experience in municipal government. And maybe if even if he hadn't achieved what he did in Fresno, he could still be a great person to talk about this issue. And and because he has those credentials, right? So if you can try to find someone that will at least work with you and um, if not make help you make a presentation and help you feel confident when you meet with those more higher up people in um, so happens to be the path you take. Now this is what I did. I'm not saying that everyone is going to have a presentation in front of 15 people in the mayor's office. Um, it just happened to be that way and because of forming connections and um, the, really the advocacy network and being in the right place at the right time but it might just be that you meet with someone one on one and you totally can just do that by yourself it's what I did at first when I met with Matt and that might be all that's required to really get things moving but you can ask them what is required what would it be helpful is there something else I can do and if you meet one on one and they say you know it would be really helpful to have someone experience talk about this um, to the mayor's office well then find find out that person and, and make it happen, right? Because these windows of opportunity, they don't come up all the time. 
So I'll give you a few tips for a successful meeting here, and our presentation is almost done, um, just if you're worried about time here. So you might have heard these before, but you know, anticipate their doubts, their questions, their concerns. Send a reminder or confirmation the day before. Definitely dress professionally, even if it's just one-on-one -on -one or if you've met the person before. Um, treat officials with kindness and enthusiasm, even if they seem rude or critical. Be Stick to what you know and what you believe in. Um, arrive very early. I arrived an hour early, which was unlike me, but it definitely helped to calm nerves and, and everything for everything to go smoothly. Um, come prepared with handouts, your contact information. If there's articles supporting what you're saying, print them out, put them in a folder. Even if you don't talk about it specifically, that's research that will show that you're prepared and you're giving, you're being a valuable resource for these people. And they'll definitely respect that. Um, Personal motivation for being involved. Are you motivated for money? Well, if you're not, then talk about why you think this is important from your city. For From a personal experience, it can really go a long way. Um, ask for their advice, again, for the best way forward, which is what I did when I met with Matt, the planner, and he told me, you know, maybe we could do X, Y, and Z to help this get moving along. So ask their opinion. Be respectful of the time, their time. If they say a meeting is half an hour, we'll plan out your meeting and and your points and and be prepared to only talk for that amount and give and and give a time for questions and discussion because that's the most important thing, right? You want to get their 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 discussion and not just share everything that you might know, but get what they might know. Definitely after the presentation is over, thank them, but follow up with a thank you email and and definitely any links or documents or research that you mentioned that you didn't have printed out, send all the information you can up or so it's um, easy to access. Um, so this is just some different um, information when, ch when you definitely want to make a change in policy, you're at that place. There's three powerhouses. There's the mayor's office. There's all the other people in city council. So all each district makes up city council. And then the city administrator, so all the department heads report to them. So these are people that you want to contact for meetings. These are people that you want to ask their deputies or their assistants if um, if you can share your presentation or have a few minutes of their time. Um, if you're really looking to change something, try to hit up all of these people and also changes. So. Um, you cannot underestimate the power, you know, of local government. There is um, a non-paid um, elected government in your neighborhood. They make up their neighborhood council, and they can make a statement and submit it to the city or your municipality about their um, endorsement um, of a certain cause that you believe in. So maybe you can um, um, meet up and partner with other local well-known organizations and um, and and make some bottom-up change as well, but approach your neighborhood council together or approach um, your, your city um, hall together. But if you have shared goals and you're working together, then it helps you make um, more, more of a statement and get your message spread further. Hands-on learning opportunity for elected officials is definitely key. And this is something we're doing right now. As you can see, we're holding an event. Uh, we're planning an event for March 5th and 6th in Los Angeles. We're going to invite elected officials to come explore a tiny house as an additional dwelling unit up in person. And so this is gonna allow them to really understand what we're trying to promote here. Um, our presentation was really met with six, um, with um, great enthusiasm and they, they really liked the idea, but we're on a tight, timeline here and so to have counselor council members really exploring buying a tiny house up in person as a backyard home will really help um, and I am gonna shamelessly plug something if you have a tiny house and you are willing to lend it for two days for our cause this is monumental if if um, local leaders like this idea this will be legal to live in tiny houses as backyard homes and this is moving tiny houses this is tiny houses on wheels um, so if you have a tiny house on wheels a professionally built tiny house on wheels we want to showcase beautiful homes so that um, 
we can possibly get funding to help you um, or someone to hire, moving it all the way to LA, depending on where you're living, but we really need a home. We've presented this day to the city and we don't have a tiny house yet, so we're working on it. But if you know anyone that has a tiny house that might be able to make in Los Angeles, but think of everyone else who then can say a big makes tiny houses legal. I just want to say everyone thank you for tuning in and definitely reach out and share your experience of advocacy. Again, this is not um, everyone's experience, but this is what we've been doing. We can connect by email or please connect with us on Facebook. Just get in touch. Follow my um, business's Latch Collective Facebook page or reach for LA Tiny House Enthusiasts Facebook page. Um, I, would, I would love to hear from you.